when they meet a woman, they know immediately if they're going to marry her, if she's going to be their wife or wife material. Do you know that that's what Rob said? The very first meeting he said, I don't know if he said it to her, but he said it to other people and he said it to himself that she's definitely going to be my wife. I'm going to marry her. But men like that, to me, have a possessive personality. So what do you think? I remember you're saying that. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't remember that's what he said, but... I think, which Logic pointed this out back in No Conduct Days, that mm -hmm. men have this radar where they know who's weak and who's not. So he probably knew that she was weak and she would put up with his possessiveness and his okay. BS. Okay. And that he probably honed in on that. And that's why he was like, she's going to be my wife. Almost like a victim. I don't think, <laughs> it's like, oh, I there's think another victim. It's an easy one. Yeah, I don't think it was a whole love at first sight thing. Got it. Okay. Okay. That happens, guys. We're not saying it doesn't, but in this case, it's clearly just uh, toxic. You know, just oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, like I said, you know, he changed his ways and he was really down talking. Oh, by the way, so you said he didn't want to be, he didn't want to share her with Pistol. No, not but at then all. the question is, why would you get with a woman with a kid then? Like, no, I, I don't. That's so. That's a good question. Well, according to according to the accounts, you know how um, you know how the authorities and, and social workers and and just different people, police officers and all people that are in authority will they will uh, interview the child, you know, especially a social worker. So at one point, Pistol actually confided with with authorities that on several occasions his stepdad was you know would actually start an argument or if they would have fights over the fact that. He does, he's giving her, him too much attention, giving the son too much attention. So I can't even imagine if you're a child and you're like nine, eight or nine years old and you're sitting there like, why are they fighting over me? Because I love my mommy. I don't understand. It's two different types of love. So if you knew when you met this woman, she had this child, what did you think she was going to do? Divorce the child and be with you? I mean, it doesn't make sense. Well, not to like talk about the victim because no matter what she did, even if she went as far as to cheat on him, you know, she didn't, you know, he didn't, he shouldn't have killed her. Right. Um, I agree. But, um, what was I going to say? I'm trying to remember now, but, um, oh my gosh, Char, I just forgot mid sentence what I was about to say. No, no way. Okay. So <laughs> yes, I totally did. Okay. Anyways, he shouldn't have gotten with a woman who had a kid. Um, I really remember, I want to remember what I had to say because it was a really good point. Um, whatever. She didn't deserve to die. He shouldn't have gotten with a woman no. that had a kid. Um, oh, that's what I was going to say. She, on the, sa on, on the same token, um, she didn't deserve to die. However, so I'm not victim, like blaming the, the victim or whatever. But if somebody's going to argue with me, about giving my child too much attention. Right. Maybe I'll give it one time. I might give it one time. And we'll talk about it. And then you better get over it. Because if it's an, if it's an issue for you, then you don't need to be with me. And I'm not going to continuously have an argument about somebody that I carried in my body for like nine, ten months. I'm not having an argument about that. Because you're uh -oh, somebody wow. else's child. You're not yeah. my kid. You're going to come and go. My child and I will always, will always be. be there. Always be. Yeah. So Kai, believe it or not, I actually, that happened to me though. So I'm thinking maybe it happens to other people. That's exactly what happened to me when my child was 14. I was moving into a new home. I had a new relationship. Long story short, you know how before you move into a house, you don't have curtains and you may not even have blinds on the windows. This was in Orange, New Jersey, by the way. Okay. So you can look right through into the bedroom. So I, I was, put, my son was helping me to pull the mattress into the bedroom and we were so tired. We just like plopped down on the bed. My, my, I was going to say husband, my boyfriend at the time, he was so creepy and such a stalker and he was very abusive. And so what he does is he's actually like peeking in the window late at night. And he sees that my son fell asleep next to me on this mattress. We had no other furniture in the room. We were just exhausted. Do you know that that was the argument? And then we had a big fight and I said, don't ever come here again. I was going to change the locks the next day. But he actually went outside to the back with a baseball bat and he like uh, crashed the, um, the meter, the meter that keeps the heat on because it was really cold. 
And I thought, are you, are, are people, are there people out there that are that possessive, insecure, and jealous because you have a child and you knew that I had a child in, at the beginning of the relationship? I'm not leaving my child for you. Are you crazy? But he told me, he says, well, why were you lying down on the bed with your, with your son? I could see that he's on the bed with you. He was in your bed. You know? <laughs> I would have been like, first of all, number one. Number one. How is it any business of yours? That's just number one. Yeah. Because I don't see a ring on this finger. There's nope. nothing here. It's a bare finger. So number one, that's none of your business. Number two, even if I had a ring on my finger, it's still none of your dad's business. Your business right? <laughs> it's none of your business. Like, you know, unless you saw us doing something, then I could see you be skeeved out or something like that. But yeah, my kid right. was and he fell asleep. Like, are you kidding me? And if that's where your mind goes, then we don't need to be together because something's wrong with you. Because if I saw a mom and a son laying on the bed together and the son's passed out, and I don't know, the mom is watching TV. The first thing that doesn't come to my mind is, man, this might be a pedophilic moment right here. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're doing your son. Yeah, right. Oh, my God. Yeah, Actually, I mean, I think, I, mean, I think he was only 13 at the time. In fact, he hadn't quite turned. It doesn't matter, though. It's not like he was 21. It doesn't matter. It's your child. You know, period. You shouldn't have it to ever explain it. If he was 21, it's your kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fully yeah. expect my daughter at 21 to still come lay her head on my lap or fully like just lay her whole body. Cause even now she's my size. Mm-hmm. She's my height. She's literally my height. And she wow. still has a way to curl her little body into my lap or well, her huge <laughs> body into my lap. She will still find a way. So I completely expect at 21, she's going to do the same thing. And what is somebody going to think if they saw that? Oh my God, what, what is oh going God, on here? Are you kidding are you me? Doing? That's crazy. Well, this should tell us something about our story, Kai. From the very beginning, like her son said, within a year that, you know, Rob just started to be very possessive from that point on. So what, so how are you moving along with the story? What happens next? Let me hear it. I'm sure everyone's like wait, waiting. Like, what, what happens? Next? Well, you can, you can pick it up, but yeah, he did turn into be very possessive. Even to her son, he kept giving her son snide remarks. Uh, he felt really unwanted. And the funny thing is, um, Pistol and the mother, Patrice, were really, really close. They were like really close. Yep. And oh my gosh, oh my gosh, y'all. If you watch the Netflix show, that little boy, well, he's a grown man now. But yeah. oh my gosh, the way he talks and you just, he breaks your heart. He breaks he your heart he just, her to this day. Oh my gosh. You just yeah, feel so listen. sorry for him. Mm-hmm. And we're going to tell you about Rob, like the way Rob talks and then y'all have to go watch this yourself. So they're going to want to, I think <laughs> it's definitely interesting But Kai, you're right. He absolutely loved his mom so much. And she, she had the same love for him. In fact, uh, pistol was in track and he also was, in, you know, just active in, in his school and in the community as a child, his mother never missed a, a track meet. She never missed a game. She never missed anything. So they said that when she was missing, they, uh, well, of course, they conducted a search outside the salon, which there was woods right back there, you know, because uh, George is so woodsy, my gosh, kind of like woods everywhere. But then after they didn't find her, so then they contacted wait, 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 him. Wait, 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 wait. You jumped ahead, though. So let's okay. talk about this first. So it is, <clears throat> so after all this, we're going to fast forward to April 15th, 2004, right? Right. It's around 1115 in the morning. And Patrice, she actually did open that salon that she wanted, right? So she yeah, actually oh, yeah, for years, salon. for years. She had it open for years. Yeah. So she's in the salon and she had seen a couple customers and I think she had another one come in. She had another one come in at like 1130 or 1145, didn't she? Actually, she missed the 1145 or 1130 appointment. That was the whole problem. She missed That's it. That's what I'm saying. That's oh, what yeah. I'm saying. Oh, yeah, she, yeah, she, she did. Yeah, she, the customer came in. She was saying yeah. that she had to do something and yeah. she had two appointments coming up. So the last time anybody had spoken with her, that was like, no, they had, they had, she was last seen helping a customer at like 1135. So, and, and then she had spoken to Rob, I think, or she had spoken yeah. to somebody briefly, at like 1115. Oh, Rob, I'm thinking of pistol. Yeah, she did briefly. She braced She talked to both of them that morning, you know, cause be her son before he went to school. And then she talked to her husband and 
everything was basically normal, you know. Mm-hmm. There wasn't anything unusual about her morning and her day. Yeah. So she, yeah, so she was helping a customer at eleven thirty-five. Whatever she got the money for the customer. Customer left, and then somebody else was supposed to come at like eleven forty-five. Yeah. I think so. Between that time, some people had driven by. So this happened in um, uh, State Road. Uh, t- what is it? Tambers Trim North. Yeah, t- yeah, that's why she. As a matter of fact, that's why she named the salon Tambers Trim and Tan. That's a yeah. That's a Tambers Trim and Tan. Thinking about it wrong. Tambers Trim and Tan. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about it wrong. But anyway, it was her. Her salon was Tambers Trim and Tan. And it was on State Road 369 in North Georgia. So on that road, the salon is like basically like a one-story like little house thing. No, it's not really and, a house. Um, yeah, that's how I, was, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then right, in front, mm-hmm. right in front is like a little area where you could park. Mm-hmm. And other than that, you know, it's just a, a little road. Like a, I think it was like a two-lane highway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, people could pass and it's a small town in Georgia. So everybody knows everybody. everybody so right. people pass by and they saw her car out there. Well, there are two different reports. They saw her car out there and they saw like a truck uh, or something at first. Yeah, they saw a, a yeah. 92 blue Chevy Lumina, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they also saw like the 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 other truck, the truck, the ninety nine Ford Taurus. Wasn't the door open to that or something like that, or it was parked at an odd angle, something like it that? It was parked at an odd angle, almost to it, it almost looks like you would, if you're trying to cut someone off from backing out. Something okay. Like that. Mm-hmm. So they passed they by, them. and you know they know her shop, and they know her shop was open, so mm-hmm. they saw those two cars. So witnesses said they saw those two cars passing while they were passing by, but they didn't stop because, you know, it could have been, they could have been customers, you know, you never yeah, know. Of course. Yeah. It could have been like the tour, the Taurus, even though it was parked at that angle, like cutting her off, it could have been just somebody, Hey, I forgot. I just wanted to make an appointment. Let me make an appointment and I'm headed home. You know, so nobody's going to think that's like odd and stop and check up on her or anything like that. So, so that happens. So, and then come 1145, her next client went in there and Patrice wasn't there, but her purse, I think her purse was still there, which she never goes anywhere without her purse. And something else was left behind Char. See that part. I don't remember what else was left. I know she left her purse. I don't think she okay. made her cell phone. They had cell phones then. So I don't know. Maybe her cell phone. They was the person in the cell phone. Yeah. We'll just say her personal items like person and cell phone. Basically, yeah, these are she, obvious things. Something obvious that okay, someone yeah, like you, a woman won't leave with her, without her purse. Woman and never now in without her, her purse. purse. And this right. day and age, even if a woman leaves without her purse, she ain't leaving her cell phone. So no, exactly. <laughs> you know. it's just like, it's, you're joined to the hip to, with both of these items. You just it doesn't yeah. make sense to have them. Yeah, yeah. So both of those things were there, and also Patrice was known for. You know, she would never just leave and leave a client. She was very timely. She was very responsible when it came to her mm-hmm. business and everything like that. So that was kind of odd. So now you could pick it up, Char. She disappeared. Go ahead. Well, you know, they did a search. And again, I don't know. It, that, well, our listeners are coming from all over. So let's just say that those that are familiar with Georgia, I'm very familiar with Georgia. There's just a lot of woods. In fact, this, this entire area was uh, located on or near a national park. Um, so so imagine they did a, a quick search and then they couldn't find her. Her customers are kind of like looking around like, oh, well, okay, where does she go? I mean, she, does she go to lunch and leave her purse on her phone? She wouldn't do that. So then that's when they did call authorities out um, to search around. And unfortunately, I don't, I don't know if it was the best move to tell her son so soon, oh, your mommy's missing. Why not just say, I mean, what do you do? Because they actually went to the school uh, represented went to the school, obviously a, a police officer, um, and then talked with the counselor and then said, we need to see pistol. And then, oh, listen, um, your mommy's, your, your mommy's missing. I mean, I think it was a bit soon to panic. That's where I'm going with this. I'm like, why are you giving so well, much? They usually, give a child? Like 24, they usually give like 24 to 48 hours, but <clears throat> I think because in a small town, they knew her personality and knew that was very odd for her. Maybe that's why, um, they jumped the gun and, and, and said, you know, they did it so fast. 
Okay, because you know what I was thinking? Why not call the next of kin? 